All right, so the stream should be going again. Uh, let's give it a chance to see how it's going. Looks okay. Like it's yep. Yep, there it so is. far, the stream looks like it's all right. Uh, we'll give it just a moment to make sure we're not having some other kind of an issue. The bit rate seems like it's all right. Uh, yeah, I think it's into like, you know, about the two millionth viewer signs in. It probably mm -hmm. starts rippling out. Yeah, it could be. Kind of problems. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, see, according to the little, my stream health thing, it says excellent stream quality. So hopefully that was just a temporary glitch and we won't repeat. So let's try again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adventure on so many levels. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons. And probably you guys won't know this, but I introduced everybody already because we had a glitch earlier. It was a whole thing, but I'm going to do it again because I'm a professional, sort of. <laughs> I'm Christiana Ellis, and I'm the Dungeon Master. Our players tonight, we have Chooch Schubert as Otterkey. Hello, hello. Starla Hutchton as Nirakina Ethu. Greetings and salutations. Jennifer Meltzer as Cadence of the Water. How you doing? James Meltzer as Cat of the Sands. Damn it, Marty, we gotta go back. We gotta go back to the Heroes of Legend. <laughs> it worked better when I had actually set you up for that the first try go around. I didn't yeah, say I know. It I came up empty. <laughs> I polymorph into Alaric. Well, no, so what we'll have to just do is establish it later and say that it was a time travel joke. So That's right. There we go. And last but not least, Mark Kilfoyle as Alaric Copperbeard. Uh, relationships. I thought this Twitch thing was hard enough. <laughs> ah, something, something, God. Hmm. So, uh, alas, uh, Viv is not able to join us tonight, but uh, Amethyst will be uh, keeping Emirate Arboris, the World Tree Company, uh, this evening. But we will, in fact, be returning after a month away to the Heroes of Legend. We're going back to the Heroes of Legend. See, it was a whole thing. <laughs> oh, damn it, Marty. But yeah. before we get started with our recap, let's talk about all of this extra stuff that's on the screen now. Well, if you've been watching for a while you probably remember these things from the last year at around this time and even maybe the year before that because i'm talking about extra life it's extra life season extra life if you are not already familiar is a charity that benefits children's hospitals they get gamers of all stripes together to uh, join in a celebration of gaming in a way that raises money collects pledges and donations for benefiting children's hospitals. And it uh, encourages people to do 24 hours of gaming and to take pledges just like running a marathon. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to direct you all to the, with, it's the link up that way. Uh, direct you to that link and you'll find the campaign page where you can donate and all your donations go to the Boston Children's Hospital. That's the hospital that I selected personally, but extra life streamers all over the place are, are can choose their own hospital, but all these children's hospitals. And uh, we, on November 2nd and 3rd, I say we, not necessarily this exact group here, but I will be running a group of people who will be uh, running 24 hours of Dungeons and Dragons live streamed. Now, we will be doing that in two sessions, two 12 hour sessions, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Saturday and on Sunday. And it's going to be great. And we're hoping, hoping to raise a bunch of money. So if you please check out that link, I'm gonna be talking a lot more about it between now and then. But here's an important key element of that. I have to decide what adventure to run. The first time I did this, I ran Tomb of Annihilation. And then last year I ran Waterdeep Dragon Heist. 
But what this year, I found myself torn in two different directions between the newest released module, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, which is an adventure that takes the players to actual hell. And then also another choice, another direction is the adventure that comes with the Acquisitions Incorporated source book, which is a uh, it's a very silly adventure. And if you're not familiar with Acquisitions Incorporated, it combines humor based on offices and running small business and that sort of thing, along with Dungeons and Dragons to enormous success. Uh, they do great stuff, and we got a very fan servicey, but yet still accessible adventure. And so, which to run? They both seem so great. How do I decide? Well, I decided today that in grand Dungeons and Dragons fashion, I'm going to roll a die for it. So, let me move my camera briefly down to live roll and make this decision. <laughs> See this die right here? This is a d6. What I'm going to do is, if it is a 1 or a 2, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. If it is a 3 or a 4, Acquisitions Incorporated. If it is a 5 or a 6, we will combine the two. So, anyone want to wish it luck? Do you have a, a choice of which it's going to be? Doesn't Seven. matter. Seven. <laughs> Seven. We're blowing on them. That's a three. Why? Acquisitions Incorporated, it is. So, we will be Yay. following on November 2nd and 3rd the adventurer called whoops, Orrery of the Wanderer. And we'll have a very silly adventure, and it is perfectly themed for raising money because it's all about acquisitions. But perhaps our Acquisitions Incorporated franchise will be non-profit. We'll have to see. But we'll do that on November 2nd and 3rd. But tonight, we're continuing the adventures of the Heroes of Legend. So let's talk about what happened the last time we met uh, here in this Not place. Not much. Nothing really. Nah. We can just move on. <laughs> well, Everyone was relaxing in the magnificent mansion, resting up after some hard fought battles. And there were some pent up feelings that were not being fully expressed. And everyone was uh, in, you know, enjoying their new uh, level features. Uh, and we had one particular tabaxi by the name of Ket of the Sands who used a true polymorph spell to disguise himself as fellow party member Nirakina Ethu, who then went and confronted Alaric Copperbeard and basically pushed him into admitting that he has feelings for her. Only then to reveal the deception that it was actually in fact Ket who had observed these feelings from afar and was determined that Alaric should do something and say something about it instead of keeping it all bottled inside. It was for your own good, man. I'm not going to forget or forgive you for that. <laughs> and then Alaric went out on patrol because he didn't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> but uh, we ended up having everyone realize that there was, in fact, someone else in this city. If you recall, we have everybody now in the city that surrounds this world tree of Emirate Arboris, the hometown of Cadence and Ket, but now encased along with the tree in a protective shell of amber, and now into that entire structure entombed within the Astral Sea. But on the outside of this shell, an armada of Githyanki trying to break their way in and an infiltration force found its way in. You stalked them, fought them to a standstill, chased off their red dragon ally, and their commander, when it became clear that he was outmatched, determined that 
you were warriors worthy of respect and that perhaps a parlay was in order. And uh, so, Otterkey, um, you were hanging out with Amethyst, the two of you communing with the tree, but perhaps at some point you heard sounds of combat in the distance. Is that something you would have followed, do you think? We may actually have caught Chooch in a moment where he is unable to respond, so we're going to assume that that's what happened. Um, brief just question for those on the stream. Make sure that, uh, if you let me know if the ambient music is ever too, gets too loud. But, uh, so in the meantime, I think what we're going to assume then is that uh, Otterkey is on his way to join the rest of you uh, to follow up and make sure that you're not in trouble. Uh, but the rest of you, uh, the red dragon fled into the tunnels, but you, and you have killed four Githyanki warriors who are now stashed in various structures within this city because you were doing a stealthy sneaking mission for a little while there, but you have now before you a Githyanki officer of some kind who is the one who uh, proposed this temporary ceasefire and he has two warriors with him who are following his orders in the matter so what would you like to do take me to your leader <laughs> do you mean the queen well, I assume that's who you meant we were going to speak to, is it not? Perhaps. But we're not quite there yet. Okay. Well, who do you expect us to parlay with? If not your leader, I mean, we could just kill you and go on with our lives. No, 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 no. Let's, the killing must stop, man. You could kill us. It's true. But then you have no means of communicating with the Armada outside that wouldn't lead to them simply overwhelming you with numbers. Well, I'm pretty sure there's more than one scouting party. And we can do to them what we did to you, and again and again and again till we finally reach the top. <clears throat> or you can make this a whole lot simpler for everyone. I mean, and really, we could just leave if we wanted to. Yeah, I'm man. not saying that I will not put you in communication with the Queen. But that is not something that happens quickly. Okay. It would take what do us, we have to do? It would take us some time to even reach the outside. And then, magically, I could put you in touch with the Supreme Commander of the Armada. Who could then pass on the communication request to the Queen. But there are questions that they will ask of me when I make this request. And if I do not have the answers, the request will be denied. What sort of questions? Let's get him out now. Exactly as I <laughs> had hoped. And then we might also have questions, so... That's fair, of course. The first question that I have for you is that I observe you do not seem to be encased in amber like most of the denizens of this city. And nor do you appear to be a construct or a demon. And you are clearly not Git Yankee. So, how did you come to be in this place? You got a couple hours, man. It's a long story. You can give me the highlights, perhaps. Well, we came here and we hijacked the ship and we flew it to the tree. We came inside. I mean, that's about it. Why? You see, well, you see, man, like, like, you notice that I am uh, clearly a a, a a a a cat person, 
the, the name of my species escapes me at this point in time. <laughs> tabaxi! <laughs> yes, I am a tabaxi, yes, that is right. I, we are I, familiar I, with tabaxi. Yes, and my and my and my friend here, Cadence of the Water, is also a tabaxi, and you see encased in the amber are many other tabaxi as well, too, as well as some other people. But the, the point is that we are f originally from this area. And we went missing a long, long time ago. We, we, we went through the tree to, you know, go on adventures and things like that. And then when we tried to get home, we found out that we couldn't. Because something is all screwy. And uh, long story short, here we are back at the tree trying to figure out what is wrong and to fix it. Do you think, perhaps, that what went screwy, as you say, is that the tree was encased in amber within the astral sea instead of in its normal place in the prime material plane. Well, that's actually, part of what happened, but there was a lot more complicated than that. I think actually that was the best thing that could happen to it. It was under attack, protected itself, mm -hmm. managed yeah. to hold off for a long time until, well, a whole lot of other things started getting interested, including some people who have a little more power than they know what to do with, and maybe a little more short-sighted in the way they're drilling through the protection. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you know, this tree is encased in amber for a reason, and we've heard rumors that you would like to access this tree so that you can travel on it the way that it was once designed for you to be able to do. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Well, there are a lot of reasons why you doing that is not a very good idea at this point in time. Like you attacking the tree and coming in here and trying to We're do not what you're attacking doing. the tree. We're simply trying to break through the shell. But that is the tree's protective case. So you are attacking the tree. Maybe you didn't know that. I'm not saying you're doing it to be malicious or rude to the tree. But How the did tree you is trying to. You said that you penetrated the shell. Why is that different? Well, there was actually a tiny little hole that someone led us through that was trying to eat us. Like, they snuck us in here because they are trying to kill us. So... It's a little more complicated than that. It was like that, though. The, I point, mean, the point is, we didn't, cut, we didn't break the casing. It was already open, and we found the loophole and slipped into the tree. Yes. And, and here we are, and we are trying to save the tree and protect the tree but you guys here attacking the tree is just making it you know put up its defenses even more because it does it, it sees you as a threat maybe that's not how i'm not saying you are a threat i'm just saying it sees you as a threat so we need to get uh, all on the same page here and you know you guys got to stop attacking the tree or else you're never going to get what you want also there's this really big construct that is designed to destroy anyone who even tries to travel through the tree right now. Like that's something that needs to be taken care of before you do that. And I, I don't know your people, but I don't want to see them all get destroyed by this evil thing. Yeah, man, that's something we gotta take. Like we were on our way to take care of that too when uh, we happened upon you guys. So, you know. There have been many across the eons that have tried to destroy the Gith Yankee. I'm not saying that what you speak of is not dangerous, but destroy my people seems far-fetched. It is like this sort of a Marut. You will. Yeah. You will. It's like unstoppable. Like, it's just something that needs to be taken care of before people start using the tree the way it was designed to be used. We just don't want to see your people get hurt any more how than much, they already have been. How much do you actually know of why this tree is in the state it's in? We know enough. Well, that's That's not really wrong. an answer. I know. If you don't know what a Marut is, then you probably haven't heard the whole story. Not that we have it all either, but it means that you have a lot of missing holes in your knowledge. It means you're probably stumbling into something which could be very dangerous for you and um, most of the world, really. Let's say that's true, then. Care to enlighten me? 
please share the reasons why it is so unwise for the Git Yankee to do what we have always done and take what rightfully belongs to us through means of conquest. Well, the thing is, this amber is not going to come down until the tree is back where it belongs. You've had difficulty getting through this amber, and that's just the protection on the tree. That's not even the thing that's endangering the tree, which also suggests to you that there are powers far bigger than you are actually betting on that are involved. We have ways to get through the amber. We have not yet brought the full assault yet because we wished to have parties, such as mine, explore the interior first. Right. And you ran into a few wayward souls in here, which has made your party somewhat decimated. And we're not even necessarily the most dangerous things in here. This is why we're speaking. I do not mean to show disrespect to you. As I mentioned, it is clear to me that you are powerful warriors. You have proven it. But the Githyanki are a mighty race. And we have, for millennia, conquered what we find and taken what we want. And in the limited space you've been in, in that's probably worked pretty well. But you're dealing in a much bigger space now. And then maybe this is not the solution that you, for this problem, maybe what you've done in the past is not the so right way to go here. Let me see if I've put together what you've described accurately. Attacking the Amber, it is clear, is slow going as of our current attempts and we have not yet brought our more powerful weapons to bear because we are simply in the investigation stage but you are suggesting that if we were to call off that attack the amber might withdraw on its own in time it's very possible the amber is not your enemy no the amber is actually your friend this tree would have been decimated centuries ago if not for that amber. So, by destroying the amber, you're effectively destroying the very thing you want to keep. So that's probably the first thing you should stop. The other thing is you have to focus your efforts elsewhere against the actual enemy, the one who does want to destroy the tree, and the many enemies that'll be coming after that, too. You think you want to use this tree? You're not the only one that would come to use it. The ones who condemned it the first time are also still out there. But should, should I also point out that if we don't put this tree back, um, everything kind of falls apart and not just in a vague sense, but I mean very literally everything, everything as we know it, all of the different planes of existence will sort of cease to exist. You must have noticed. Your people have been traveling in these astral seas for a long time. How many tears in these seas have you seen? Certainly more of late. But you are a fool if you think the Githyanki have been limited to the astral sea. The astral sea contains all manner of natural portals beyond these more recent tears. We have been planar, extra planar travelers for millennia. Well, you won't be able to any longer if we cannot fix the tree. That is what she's trying to say. Because there you won't, won't be any planes. There won't be any anything. So let us take, in, take it as a given then that neither party wants the tree destroyed. We don't. Uh, yeah, that's right, man. We, we don't want to. I want to. I want to save the trees, man. Furthermore, it is Are you guys out there. Is everything all right? I think, I think we got it figured out how to reinforce that amber. <laughs> uh, so, oh, um, hello. Yeah. So, uh, Autarchy, uh, as you race up towards everyone, uh, 
of the rest, you see standing opposite them are three Githyanki, two in the same sort of standard half plate that you've observed before, but one of them in clearly what is an officer's uniform, and they, everyone seems to be having a peaceful discussion. Um, and then as, uh, as this, uh, this officer turns and looks at you, at first he is sort of casually interested at this newcomer, but then you see his face distort in, in rage, and he just points at you and he says, Where did you get that sword? I don't know if anybody else, all I heard was wear sword. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get that sword. Ah, Ah. Ah. That's the. Uh, it was uh, a gift, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, a family heirloom, really. He he uh, <laughs> steps forward and says, "Lies! <laughs> that sword is not for you. Surrender it at once." Let's just remember who is in charge here. Have a seat, and we'll discuss this. I will fight you to the death for that sword right now, and if I die in that pursuit, it will have been a worthy death. You want to condemn your people? Uh, well, that's what we're talking about here. Your life is meaningless in the context of that. That sword is not for him. That is a Git Yankee weapon, and it does not belong in your hands. And he is, he's basically coming after you with the sword. Roll initiative. All right. <clears throat> there we go. We had him exactly where we wanted him. <laughs> yeah, because he's really like the goal. Goal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where is my. Are we all rolling in uh, uh, Well, oh. I mean, I, I think it's fair for you to all. Let Let's me just see uh, how this plays get, out. Uh, let me get <laughs> yeah, you switched over it. onto the, uh, the map. We'll do a and, virtual. Uh, He's already pretty hurt, so I'm kind of like, ah. Archie will be fine. fine. Archie hasn't even fought anybody. He's got full health. He's good. All right, so let's let's get everybody actually where they. Are. If I gotta cast finger of death, I will. Approximately how long has <laughs> it been since the battle? Uh, minutes. Minutes? Okay. <laughs> I will roll as appropriate. All right, and then we got. Um, okay. Doo -doo, deleting all the people who aren't there. And putting Otter Key on. <laughs> That's my little getting ready for combat song. Hey, look, those dead guys. That's where our plan actually worked for a little while. <laughs> Good That's job, we, us. We had a plan. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, yeah, so basically he is, uh, he, he is about to charge you. So go ahead and... Uh, roll initiative. My initiative roll is two. <laughs> Good to have you back, Archie. <laughs> <laughs> You're the lower end of the initiative count. Well, I got an 18. So, so right, hang on, let me... Uh... Wait, we're not just watching this? Oh, we're all rolling? <laughs> just in well, case we have just to... I mean, you are all there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. since we're here, I guess. All right, well, so... Let me uh, go ahead and I, for some reason, I, I didn't anticipate that this would happen right now, but uh, in, in hindsight, I don't know why I wouldn't because it seems like really obvious. Started it. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so that's, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, all right, this guy's got 14, and uh, these guys have got eight water key as two near has got 18 uh, who else was rolling i also had 18 i got a, i got i got 13 i got a dirty 20. Everybody. 
So, uh, so Alaric, you are up first, and you see what seems very clear is that uh, with the backup of his two his two guys, this officer is is charging uh, Archery with his sword drawn. But you, you are able to move first. Yep. I'm going to move to put myself in the way, and then I'll summon the axe. All right. Like, then, like, like right there? Yeah. All right. Stand where you are. And I'm going to hold my, uh, my action <laughs> to uh, use the blunt side of the axe if anyone tries to move beyond me. Okay. All right, and so uh, you do that, Cadence. I am going to also. I'm going to take out uh, my bow, and I'm going to go stand in between them and Archie next to Alaric. Okay. And hold an arrow. Like that. Yep. And I'll hold my action in case they bypass us to go get Archie. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and then Nira. Um, I'm going to cast Hold Person on the captain there. Okay. Uh, what, that's a wisdom saving throw, right? Mm, yes. 19. Ha! He rolled a natural 19, uh, <laughs> so that's a 25. Son of a bitch! Ah. Yeah. Hold, I said hold. He, he shrugs off your, your, um... you just that mad. Yeah. And yeah. so he uh, is is Psychos. pushing around you, ignoring you both completely. So I think uh, Cadence certainly mentioned it as a held action, but uh, is that was that your intent also, Alaric? Oh yeah, yeah. As soon as he tries to move beyond me, I'm yeah. Well, he he's, he doesn't have to move out of your melee range, so it wouldn't be an attack of opportunity. Right. But if you were holding your action, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he's he's going for it. He is not um, he's not paying any attention to you. He All seems right. his his face is twisted with rage. Uh, that's a twenty five to hit. Uh, that hits, yeah. The big blunt side of the axe mm -hmm. for ten points of bludgeoning damage, non lethal. I have lost track of what my, uh, I can't be right. All right. Um, 10 points, right? Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, you hit him and, uh, yeah. And it, it hurts him. He goes, ow. He doesn't yeah. really say ow, but. Does he, does he, does he like pause at all in his movement? No, he, he okay. seems utterly, he, uh, make an insight check, Cadence. Um, okay. Sorry. 23. He said that he would fight to the death to take that sword away and consider it that a worthy death. And he he meant it. <clears throat> uh, so you can go ahead and make your, your held attack. Okay. Um, that is a... To twenty one. That hits. Um, that is uh, just ten points of damage. All right. He's pretty bad. He's he's very hurt for sure. Um, is that that that's uh, that's it, right? Yeah, that's all I can do. I yep. I just held the one action. So. Archie. He is making three great sword attacks against you. Okay. First one is an 18. No. Second one is a crit. Ow. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Uh, uh, 14 slashing damage. And... Uh, that's right. Get my roller out. So 14 slashing damage and 
36 psychic damage. Oof. And then the third attack. Uh, the third attack is 19. <clears throat> 19 misses. Okay. Um, for the one that hit, I'll uh, use the Hellish Rebuke reaction. Okay. And uh, point my finger. Makes Screw you. Um, okay. And then he does a dex, yep. dexterity versus 18. And. Uh, that's a 17. 10, so. Uh, so that's 12 points of fire damage. Okay. Okay. That is his turn. Uh, Cat, you're up. Um. Decision of decisions. <laughs> right, should I try and talk to him or should I just try and make him dance? Um, hmm. Yeah, you know what? I've never cast this spell before, so I'm going to cast Otto's Irresistible Dance on him. <laughs> just because I've never used it before and it's a comical moment. So, yeah. yeah, that'll calm him down. Yeah, Otto's Irresistible Dance. Wisdom saving throw. All right. Is it a wisdom saving throw? Yeah, it is. Because I feel, I feel like there is... Uh, I want to just double check something because this is an interesting spell. Yeah, I'm um, looking at it. Wisdom saving yeah. throw. No, see, it it is on as an action on their turn, they make a wisdom saving throw. But when you cast it, it just happens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I like so that. Okay. basically, as Ket points and uh, casts this spell... You see this enraged uh, Gith Yankee start with his greatsword, just doing a weird little. He just starts doing a jig. Doing a little shuffle. <laughs> doing a little, starts doing the running man. You know. I don't understand these Gith fighting techniques. <laughs> he he looks frust really mad. Like he was already like enraged to the point of rushing into death. For uh, for this purpose and uh, being forced to dance in a silly way doesn't seem to have improved his mood. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't so now stop every dancing, though. now everybody has advantage on attack rolls against them. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, until it's his turn, and yep. only then if uh, he can resist it. Yep. So, but uh, it is now the other Gith Yankees' turn though, and they are uh, along with uh, their colleague they're they're going in to just wail on on archie there <clears throat> so uh they are each making two great sword attacks uh so first uh that's a 19. miss and then a 15. miss and then another 19. miss and then a seven so your arm, you are able with your armor to deflect all of their all of their attacks, uh, but they they look um, not maybe quite as blind with fury as their <clears throat> officer, but mm -hmm. nonetheless willing to follow his lead in this regard. Right. So you 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 sense that they are doing it because it's. Well, you can make an insight check if you want. They, they don't seem as enraged, and yet they are also pressing the attack despite right. bad odds. So that is their turn. Oh, Archie, it is your turn. So can't we talk about this? Um, and I'm going to... Let me see. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, I'm going to return... I'm going to smack the boss man with the sword. He's so okay. once back. Uh, you have advantage. Yeah. yeah. Because he is dancing in a silly way. So literally, uh, the uh, he is shuffling, tapping his feet, and capering for the duration. 
Yep. His first stack is a 26 to hit. Yeah, that hits. And... Does... He looks 17 very points. <clears throat> 17 points of slashing damage. He goes down. Ooh. He's unconscious. Is he still dancing? No. <laughs> Drops limp to the ground. Slashed by Archie's blade. And I'll swing the sword towards, you know, my, for my second attack, towards the guy next to him. Mm -hmm. But I'll hold it. And, you know, and say, parlay! Okay. Uh, just hold it there. Okay. So I'm not going to actually take the second attack and just... All right. Uh, Alaric, you're up. Yeah, um, geez, do I have a rope on me? Somebody give me a rope. I stow the weapon, uh, take the sword from the downed guy and just sort of start binding him up. If I had a rope, I don't even remember what I've got anymore. He does I'm not sure resist as he is bleeding out. No, I can't do much about that. Gear mm. needs to stabilize him or something. So, uh, but, fine. Uh, yes, Alaric is doing that. Uh, Cadence. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold a shot at the other two. Okay. Like at, at them, just be like, don't even move, right. and hold it. And if they go to attack Archie, mm -hmm. then I will fire on them. Okay. Uh, Nira. I'm going to cautiously wander over, reach out a finger, hold it for a second, kind of look at everybody. It's like, are we sure about this? Finger of death. <laughs> we uh, should try to help him. He's mistaken. Uh, I will boop him with Spare the Dying then. Just okay. It doesn't cost me anything. So. <laughs> he is stabilized. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you would have had to character. get all the way up to the, yeah, to the you, melee with him. Or rather, you know, to touch. Right. So, are, are you backing up after that? Yeah, because Archie's got his sword on that one guy, so. And Cadence has an ear already. So, yeah, right. gonna back up. So, theoretically, you are, you know, you could be exposed to an opportunity attack, but the guy does not take it. He still seems entirely focused on Otterkey. Uh All right, so the, uh, the Githyanki Kithrak is still unconscious, so does not take a turn. Uh, Ket, you're up. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kinda walk over below Nira and just kinda hold up my finger as it crackles with dark energy and just look at those other two guys and just say, Go ahead, make my day. And hold my action <laughs> that if they start attacking, I'm gonna cast finger of death on somebody. Um all right, uh, yeah. So, uh, on their turn, despite all these threats, one of them shouts, there can be no peace while you hold that sword. And he attacks. Oh, well, for crying out loud. Yeah. So he is attacking, wow. um, you know, he is attacking Archie, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll those and then we'll deal with the health actions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's going to be a dirty 20. That'll hit. Okay. Uh, that's going to be 11 slashing damage and 7 psychic damage. Okay. And then the second attack is an 18. So that misses, right? I didn't hear what it was, but 18. armor class is 20. 18, yeah. yeah misses. Um, okay, so that, uh, uh, you know, so he misses. So the held uh, attacks there. Um, Cadence had held an attack, for sure. Yep. Um, uh, Otterkey wasn't holding an attack. He just didn't take his previous attack. So right. let's do Cadence's first. Uh, I thought Alaric was the for me. Oh, okay. Well, Alaric used his turn hold to tie action. up yeah. the Kithrak. Oh, that's right. Okay, so um, I'm going to fire a shot at him. Yep. 
Um, and it's probably not going to hit. Uh, 19? 19 does hit. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, 15 points of damage. Okay. Just looking at these... Uh, like, I don't remember how, how I did these numbers. These numbers are weird. They were, like, really low already. Not these two guys. These two guys hadn't t- got touched. Like, by the time they showed up, they were they, everything was finished already. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, so the Kithrak was definitely low. What was the damage? It was uh, 15. 15. All right. Uh, and so then, Ket, would you have also uh, released your spell? Yeah, I mean, I said I was, so yeah. I kind of have to do it. So, uh, Constitution saving throw. Uh, that's a five. Alright, so he's gonna fail. So let me do the dice roll. Uh, 54 points of damage. Yeah, he's dead. Okay. Is there an extra effect with that spell? Uh, no, that's it. Isn't he just oh, like instant uh, dead, yeah, though? Well, yeah, and sorry. It, it says a humanoid killed by the spell rises at the start of your next turn as a zombie that is permanently under your command. Right, so, so right now that right now he's, he's just he's just instantly his body just is immediately drained of all of its vitality goes pale and just <laughs> fall and flops to the ground. Um, and then the other guy uh, is uh, he continues to uh, attack, but he as he's doing so he he shouts is saying, "We could not go back." knowing we had left that sword with you. What does uh, that that's mean? a 23 to hit. <clears throat> yep. Uh, that's going to be 8 slashing damage and 11 psychic damage. Okay. <clears throat> Something I had forgotten was the sword actually grants me um, resistance to psychic damage. Mm. So okay. I had retroactively half the other one. But... Okay. <laughs> And then, so the next attack would was uh, just a seven. Yeah, that'll miss. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that was their turn. So it's actually your turn again now, Potterkey. Uh, yeah, and I'll. So be it. <clears throat> I'll attack the last guy standing. <laughs> uh-huh. Oops. Ah. I got a jumper. <laughs> oh, I want crits. All right. Uh, two and six. So. Oh, three more ones. Six, eight, nine. You know so what? 22, or I'm sorry. Yeah, 22 points of slashing damage. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to propose, now that we've kind of resolved a, uh, a crit um, uh, on both sides in the same standard way, I'm going to propose a new house rule uh, that will apply to all crits on both sides going forward. Um, in, because it can be disappointing when you get a crit and then like roll two ones or something like that. Um, I What I think we're going to do is uh, when you get a crit, start by maximizing whatever a normal hit's damage would be and then roll the second half so to speak. Oh gotcha. Right. Oh, wow. So okay. if for example a normal hit would be one D eight plus two, you're gonna say eight plus one D eight plus two. Mm-hmm. But that applies for my crits as well. Right. All right. So I'm assuming you said that applies for both sides because you kinda cut it. Yes. <laughs> right on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um oh and then the Radiant damage on top of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With six. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not great. And the second swing. Swing is 17. 17 uh, does hit him. Yeah, just hits him with his half plate. All right. 14 total. Yeah, he goes down. Now what are we supposed to do? So much for the parlay. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, and and I think on. all of you watch as uh, this uh, this Gith Yankee slowly starts to moan and just sort of lurch to his his feet, but he's clearly looks just as desiccated and decayed and dead as before, except for the part where he's standing up. What the hell? <laughs> oh god, again. Zombie, man. I hate the undead. Have I mentioned that before? Uh, I'm not to me. Did you do this, Otterkey? Huh. No, no, no. I was interesting for a while, but I gave that up. No, yeah, man. This, so. this one's all me. What? Great. Can you make it go away, or do I have to... Do the thing. No, no, he's 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 here to help us, man. He's he's I I give him the commands, man. He follows me. He, he does a really all awkward, right. Uh, salute. Can yeah, he man. speak, or is he? Can he speak at all? Can he tell uh, us what the hell's wrong with this stupid sword? I don't know. Let me mm. ask him. Hey, Herman, what's up with this sword? Uh, yeah. See. Uh, mm. He's kind of. Yeah, that that kinda, helps. Yeah. He's kind of well, touched. Well, then so, we got this guy all like tied up and unconscious. When he wakes up, we can ask him to tell us what the hell is going on. Yeah, man, we could do that. Yeah. I mean, is if I had to make up? an educated guess, I'd say that sword that you took from that uh, Gith Yankee officer on that ship, I believe, is where you got it, right? Yeah, it must be a. Uh... Yeah, I'm guessing that's some right. sort of a status honor thing. I think perhaps I will sheath it and put it in a bag of holding Actually, for the time being. That could be really, really important. If we were to return that to them as a gesture okay. of goodwill, that yeah. might buy us something. But yeah. you wouldn't be able to wield it anymore, and you'd have to make sure that we don't appear to have stolen it. So, I mean, what do we mm. just say we found it? I mean, does this we one have one? We could take it's it from not him too, and then we know. return too, right? Well, this one might be the first one we can convince if we give him an understanding that it was a misunderstanding, that we didn't realize mm -hmm. that the sword was that important. We found right. it. Which he is true. Have, he didn't have right. time to really explain it, nor did we, but now maybe we can buy that time. Yeah, but are we not, all not, really good enough liars that we can convince them? Not like a lie. I'm just it. saying, uh, not knowing the you, importance is true. Have you met Ted near? <laughs> Yeah, he's a pretty damn good liar. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, he tells a very convincing story. And... If you could trust him at all, maybe. <laughs> hmm. He's not that bad. I mean, yeah. regardless, we don't necessarily have to lie. We didn't know the understand or know how important this was. It's true. We can convince this one, spare okay, his but, life, and well, give him but, a sword to return with him. But Is where do we go back to normal? Yeah. No, the one that's unconscious, not the zombie guy. Yeah. I, oh, I'm sorry. I got it mixed up with that. I think that's okay. another one of Cat's problems. Gotcha. What? The zombie gotcha. guy? Yeah. He has a habit of <laughs> messing things up. Man, I mean, Alaric, you're so hostile. I'm certainly willing to. Okay, but where do we tell him we got it? Because we did sort of kill those people, and... They understand combat. They understand that a lot. He kept talking about it, how important it was to them. We reach well, them at the same level. Thing, so, yeah. I don't know. Archie, are you willing to give it up? I. The stakes are too high not to. It's a fine sword. I. I but, but you have other weapons, right? Yeah, I mean, it's you certainly not my first choice. You were good before you got that sword. You'll be good again. That well, doesn't determine your fate. I'm not taking this dragon mask, though. I really like this mask. Are you wearing the mask? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I don't think I ever took it off. <laughs> yeah, that you might want to hide as well. Oh, no, you're just carrying it around. I don't remember anybody wearing it. Archie was wearing it. Yeah, I wore it in combat, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I had attuned to it. So, I think if not for the sword, they might have had questions about that too, but the sword really took their primary attention right. and there wasn't really any time to discuss any other secondary concerns. You might want to mm -hmm. put that away too, at least for now. Well, yeah. so what you know what is that what you... You took it from 
uh, a Githyanki that had clearly been corrupted by the Demon Lord in some way. Right. But uh, at the same time, you also know that the Githyanki to partner with Red Dragons, and so it's not not likely that they wouldn't recognize it, the mask. Mm-hmm. Was well, it like know. a pile of maggots or something un- under the, the... It was all kinds of squishy underneath, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gross. It's like oogie boogie. All right. Yeah, I'm in. Go ahead and put the mask and the sword in the Let's bag. take a look around to see if there's anything else you might have, which is offensive to these guys. I'm wearing Ooh. armor that it was get Yankee boss armor. Ah, uh, damn it. But he didn't seem to care before, so I'm not going to worry about it because I need that armor. Well, put a cloak over it or something, maybe. Just okay. we don't want to draw attention to it. Well, there's yeah. plenty of dead bodies laying around here. I mean, it's plausible that... I mean, you did take it off a dead body, so... That's true. It's, Long not, about, time. it's like, not about how you found it, necessarily. Well, we I mean... Treat, yeah. We, we gotta treat these people with some respect. It's it's not a simple matter that we can fight our way all the way up to the queen and then force her to submit. That's not going to work. We're dealing with an army, not a not a god, not a demon lord. Mm-hmm. Nothing so simple as that, if that we, uh, makes any sense. Do we have a cloak yeah. in the bag of holding Archie? I have a cloak. Nope. You can use it. I have, yeah, I I have, have that. Uh, I have that that fluttery cloak, the flappy flappy cloak. But <laughs> I have a cloak, but it's like a cloak of spider walking, and I can't attune to it right now. So. Yeah, yeah, I think I still have the the. Uh, you can wear. I can it still that. wear it, just not attuned yeah. to it. I guess. Okay, I'll put that on. I, was say, I think I still have that elven cloak. For... I have a cloak, but you can't tell because this. Well, I have this clothing. Yeah, this clothing is weird. <laughs> Trust me, it's really weird for me, too. Yeah, yeah. Is that why you're being so grouchy? You've been, like, so grouchy. I'm not grouchy. We just lost a chance, that's all. Uh, well, he's hmm. still alive. So do you want the cloak of billowing? Is that what it was that you wanted? No, I don't need it. I have okay, a cloak, okay. remember? Okay. <laughs> so should I bring this guy around or what? Is he still tied up, yeah? Yeah, he's yeah. he's been securely yeah. tied since uh, so. obviously he was unconscious and not able to resist. Okay. Key, I, I might so yeah, I'll put the items out of sight and I'll step back. Well, I, I, he already knows about the sword. Maybe we'll present the sword in plain sight when he wakes well, up. It's I'll, I'll put it in its scabbard, and I'll take it off the belt. So I'll, you know, I won't be holding it or I won't be uh, wielding it. We'll present okay. it as a peace offering. I, I think that's. We've got to build trust with them. I've dealt with a lot of people over time. Nothing quite this explosive, but... Well, we did turn one of his friends into a zombie girl. We're going to have to get rid of that first. Can yeah. you? You made it. You fixed that problem. Uh... Aren't they pretty good with death? Hey, Herman. Hey, Herman, man. I mean, I just thought that, you know. Yeah, man. Uh, do me a favor. Cut off your own head, would you? Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, so he does still have Ooh, the do sword that? that he was wielding before, and he does take it and start going, ah, uh, ah. Uh, and it's, right, it's slow aggressive. going because he's pretty clumsy with it, but he's making an effort. Oh, All right, man. God that's, sake. Wow. That should keep, that should keep him busy. Right. I'm just going to summon the sword and I just slash him down. The hell with that. Couldn't Nira have just done like some kind of, you know, dead? Yeah, what well, do you want? Look, what do you make that mess? You can clean it up. Weird, I know, coming from me, but that was creepy. Yeah. You're, 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 one, after the damage it had already done to itself, you're able to take it down pretty quickly and it does right. not rise again. Okay. All right. So my suggestion is we put this guy in a sitting position, kind of leaned up against the wall. You can put the sword in his lap. I'll bring him around and warn him if he misbehaves, and that's it. Sword so is I, ours, and it's good night. Have we had a chance to tie him? Is he tied? Yeah, you yeah, tied, you tied him. him. He's All right. secured. All right. Just don't do anything rash. Look at Ket. And Nira, for that matter. <laughs> and what did I do? <laughs> Hell. What is going on? <sighs> oh, this world. Okay. So are we waking him up? Let's do Prop this. him up against the wall of the building there. All right. All right, and 
I will hit him with healing word. Hit him! Hit him! Mm -hmm. oh. I can not literally hit him. Healing finger of death. He is now zombie. I cast Dr. Jellyfinger. Oh, wait, that's different. <laughs> and he gets six points back. All right. Uh, and I'm going to be crouched down in his face. Okay. His eyes sort of flutter open, and at first he kind of starts... Uh, do you still have uh, tongues up? You probably would, right, Ket? Yeah, I think so. Because, I mean, you cast it before. Like, you were having this... No, well, well he's cast it. it. So, yeah. okay. Did yeah, he use common? I he yeah. So he spoke to you in common. I I, I I'm gonna assume it's not up. And so, just in general, he starts by saying a couple of like confused sounding things in his own language that you don't really follow. But then, as his eyes kind of focus on you, Nira, and he I got he shocking grass tests, ready in my hands. <laughs> he tests the binding a little bit and realizes that he's secured and kind of looks all around. Now, let's try that again. We're sorry. We didn't realize what this meant to you. And we'd like to start again, making some sort of bridge. There are bigger things and more important things than the mistakes that we've made and even perhaps some small slights in honor. Your entire people, all peoples, are in danger. And all we're trying to do is make sure that doesn't happen. We know you can help. We've seen your forces. We know how powerful you are. We want to help. We'll start with this sword. Are you, you're offering it? Um, I'll yeah. hold it up. I'm uh, staring him dead in the eyes. Okay. And kind of hold it out towards him. And then look at the two, or you know, the bodies. So you 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 can tell that he definitely, like, he listens to you, but he's also watching the sword carefully, and then he's kind of looking around at the rest of you. And just says, if "You turn over the sword and release me. I will not fight." You'll talk, and you'll listen. Yes. You know, all you had to do was say that nicely before without attacking, and that's, this whole thing could have been avoided. Let's let bygones be bygones. Just suffice to say, there was no way for us to know the meaning of the sword. And I apologize. See? As well, it's for killing your men. It's I'll set it down in front of them. looks over at them and, and just kind of says... <clears throat> They did the honorable thing, as it would seem you do now. I'm trying. Some I'll of go you behind him and untie it. You untie him? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he definitely, you know, stands. He's being careful not to make any, like, sudden moves or anything. Um, did, did What did you do with his weapon when you tied him up? Uh, Probably just left it lay on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he doesn't go for that first. In, uh, as soon as he's standing, he like holds his hand out like to receive the sword. <clears throat> I'll hand it to him. Um. Uh, he he just briefly slides it a little bit out of the sheath just to you know verify that this isn't some sort of a trick. He rubs his uh, thumb along it just a little bit and seals it again and just says it is clear that you don't know what you've just bought with this but let me tell you that it is a great deal I apologize if in my fury I did not allow a more reasonable discussion to be in place but these swords are important to my people, and they are not awarded to anyone unless they have proved their worthiness in battle. They do not belong in the hands of non Githyanki, honorable and skilled warriors, though they may be. And he goes to like affix it, uh, to, like to his side. 
I can accept that. And he goes and he goes to like pick up his own great sword, which you notice <clears throat> is not the same same style of sword. You know, mm. and, but he he does put his own back on it in its like shoulder uh, harness, and he just looks uh, at his men and just says, "I don't suppose they could be healed as you have brought me back." No, you are only unconscious. They're dead. Yes, Arthur. Too late. Sorry. It was uh, the fury of the moment, as you understand. Of course. Every Gith Yankee knows the risks when they march into battle. <clears throat> Their deaths <clears throat> were in a worthy end. I hope we all find the worthy end. Maybe we can start at a beginning. I I don't know your customs. I only know my own. I'm a little bit of Elven human. My name is Alaric, and I extend my hand to him. Um, he, you know, returns to, you know, to shake it, and he, it's a, it's a little stiff, but he's clearly returning the gesture. He says, I am Kithrak Sagor. Well met. This is Otterki, Nirakina Ethium, Cadence of the Water, Cat of the Sands. And one more of our group is missing, tending to the tree that we are all fighting for. Her name is Amethyst. Our friend, not the tree. Well, yeah, I don't know. We don't know the tree's name yet. I think it probably doesn't have one. Amethyst probably not. Older than, older than names, maybe? It's not the point. So. So. I did not deceive you before. Clearly you have answered some of my questions. There are a few more that I will be asked when I report this up the chain. However, I can assure you that at this present moment, I believe that your request to speak with the Queen will be accepted. That is wise and honorable. And I believe that the Supreme Commander will be willing to give the order to cease the attack in the interim. Though they are consulting with an extra planar being that is unpredictable. Does it have a name? I don't believe that I can disclose that at this time. If the Supreme mm. Commander believes it appropriate, they will let you know. Nirakina, do you think it's one of yours? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but... Well, that coalition of godlings, whatever the hell they were. Seems unlikely. Or that other coalition. No. <laughs> I think that seems unlikely. I think this is something else. <clears throat> so A lot of... No, speak. You have presented an answer, at least, for the Amber. And have proposed a solution other than simply shattering the shell and presented possible additional risks that had not been considered. These are important, but I do have other questions. What do you know of the constructs that litter the tunnels below and have mm -hmm. apparently built themselves into cages? Yeah, <laughs> are those guys? Wait, they did what? Um, Their leader is no longer in control of them, so they are done doing what they were doing. No longer yeah. in control. Their leader is no more. 
They're... They were tasked with uh, basically restraining the tree in its current state. But he's, they stopped. They're no longer doing that. What of the demons infesting? We saw them carving cavities like rot. Yeah, that was disgusting. Yeah, the big demon is gone. The rest will probably wither in power without the support, I think. Mm. There may be some cleanup needed, though. Is this your doing? Yes. yes. We defeated it. Are there any other entities that should be included in this parlay? Hmm. Well, in a way, maybe, but... Put another way, are you able to speak for anyone in charge of the tree? Or would there be those who would dispute your authority to do so? I can speak for the tree! <laughs> yeah, I don't think really there is anyone with the authority to speak for the tree in the capacity that you are suggesting. There are a lot of people who would like to throw their opinions around and make big decisions. This is what I speak of. Who would claim the authority? Regardless what of I... whether you deem their claim worthy. Oh, Everybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's currently one dude, but he's in pieces right now. Abstract. He doesn't count in any way. I think make some claim to it, but. I'm sorry. So they. I, I didn't hear what you said, Starl. What's that? The, the, the abstract constructs of law. Yeah. They make some claim to it, and the Marut is their doing, but. Yeah. He. Well, um, he he looks like he doesn't know what you're talking about, but that he is absolutely listening to what you have to say. He's not dismissing you, he just doesn't that doesn't ring a bell for him. I'm trying to remember if there was another well, term that I think that was... I yeah. think that most who might have a claim to it abdicated their their claims when they put us on the, on the job. No. They literally told us to deal well, with it. Cat and Cadence may be the last surviving heirs to the city. I had a question about that. Yeah? The tree has been here in the astral plane for tens of thousands of years. Now, the astral plane is not like other planes. People do not age here. But you spoke of coming here. Are you tens of thousands of years old? If so, how did you manage that? Were you here in the Astral Sea? Well, you were trapped. We the there was some petrification involved, I think. I think they actually skipped most of it. Yeah, we were asleep. Like, hibernating. And the rest of you? How did you oh. come to take this position? Yeah. What brought you here? That's investigating the disrupt, yeah, and basically investigating the disruptions, the uh, the incursions from plane to plane led us here. No, the the tears ripping up the all tears, the, right? Uh, different planes, have, yeah. That that was our original mission, and uh, our involvement with that was complicated. But um. The tares yeah. have been a great boon to my people, though, to be sure, they are unpredictable, and the queen does not like not knowing what's going to happen. Well, they are accelerating, and worse will happen. Which is why it's so imperative to get this tree back so we can stop the damage from spreading and hopefully... I I don't know. Make it more predictable, I suppose. More contained and controlled, at least. Very well. The one remaining challenge we face in bringing this message 
to the Supreme Commander and through them to the Queen. The Amber resealed itself around our entry. Do you have a means of leaving the shell without doing the damage you say will be harmful to the tree? Well, maybe. I mean, we can plane shift out. We might also be able to see if Amethyst is continued oh, her commune. She might be able to have another it. friend that might be able to help. Um, he he also when you mentioned plane shift, he does he does actually say plane shift to where? I mean, anywhere we wanted to go, really. We have a couple different places we could go, and then we could come back here and meet with your queen. That would take time, though. Indeed, yeah. and we do Cadence. not yet understand one another's capabilities, so I will share with you, I am capable of plane shift. I could shift to somewhere else and then return but that would be the long way around compared mm. to a tunnel of the type you mentioned entering through. Cadence. But this, what? Your friend that you speak with that is might true. have a solution. I could ask. Because the tunnels were repairing themselves, just so you know. Like, I don't know if that tunnel would even still be there. Um, I will reach out um, in Draconic mm -hmm. to um, Arius. Okay. Are you saying it out loud or are you trying to sort of like telepathically? I'm not telepathic, so I will say right. it out loud to okay. see if he answers me. Uh, what what do you say? Um, I would just say, um, Arius, are you? Did you come with us? Who is this you speak to? This Arius. You realize that this guy can also speak Draconic. Draconic. Yeah. There's a dragon here. What variety of dragon? He Italic? doesn't know. He doesn't know. He's an amber dragon. He was born here. Fascinating. Um, you hear in your in your head, Cadence, just a tiny little voice, very faintly saying, "I don't like him. He's scary." Um, and then I will switch to answering, like, in telepathically, um, that yes, he's scary, but. Right now, he is our only option of trying to find a peaceful solution. Okay. Could you, could you show us a way out of here that wouldn't hurt the amber around the tree? There's, there's quiet for a little while. Are you sure? You wouldn't have to show yourself so that he doesn't see you. As long as you could guide me. Okay. Do you need it in a specific place? Um, I will ask out loud. Uh, is there a specific place that we need to get out that would be the best way to leave? Well, we did have that ship parked. Wherever that was, was would that be convenient? My ship was swallowed by the encroaching amber. However, mm. I can send a signal were we to simply reach the outside. The tree in its amber shell is surrounded. A ship would see us. So it doesn't really matter where we go out. Closest point. Probably best. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will say that telepathically then to him. Arya says, Do you, are you going right now? Um, I think so. Okay. 
okay? I don't um, think we have time to wait. Although, I mean, we do need to go back and... We can't just leave Amethyst here. Yeah. Um. So, um, Otterkey, one of the things that you experienced when you were, you know, kind of communing with this tree <clears throat> with Amethyst is you were less experienced with it than she was. Um, so you had the sense that you were only kind of getting a taste of what she was experiencing with the tree. Mm -hmm. But you had the feeling that when she was in communion with it like this, she could really kind of sense just about everything that's happening within the space. Yeah. And you don't know necessarily, like, does that extend to the point where she could l be listening to your conversation right now? You're not sure. But in a very general way, y you feel like she could tell where you are, for mm -hmm. example. And we would come back for her, right? I mean, we yeah. Can... <clears throat> um, and mm -hmm. I will telepathically ask... Um, ask Arius if he would look after Amethyst while we're gone and take care of her while she helps the tree. You're, you're going somewhere so that you can stop the fighting? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to stop them from attacking the tree. Will, th will they go away? Not necessarily, but maybe they would stop fighting, stop hurting the amber and trying to break in here to get the tree. Okay. Well, if you think it's, if it's, if, if, if you think we should, then okay. We and, have to uh, do something yeah. or they're going to keep, they're going to all come in here and we don't want that, right? Yeah, so you, you don't really hear a response, but as you are all kind of standing there, you hear a little bit of like a, like, sort of a popping, like, cracking sound. Uh, and you look down and there is, at your feet, in the, like, the amber that's coating the ground, like, a little bit of a ridge has sort of popped up and it's starting to, like, trail along, like, leading a path. This is the way. That's new. And, uh, All right. Wow. And uh, so uh, Sagor, this uh, this Githyanki, uh, is observing that and just saying, "You are in contact with the dragon, and it has the means to do this." Yes. Fascinating. Does this dragon have a voice that should also be represented in the parlay? I mean, that stands to reason. Probably. It was here yeah. before we were. Yeah. It's its home. Yeah. Um, Forgive I my ask. asking if this is an impudent question. For dragons, I know, can be concerned with the appropriate respect being shown. Mm -hmm. How old is this dragon if you were to make a guess? Um, not very old at all. It's like a very young young dragon. I mean, how could even a person tell here who ages here? could be as old as this tree for all we know this is true but you have uh, answered the question that i was really getting to you saw the behavior of my so-called dragon ally he had grown too large and too self-important too concerned with establishing his own horde and less concerned with the mighty will of the githyanki they become unruly and arrogant 
as they age. This one is young, you say. He could be. Or he just hasn't had a lot of contact with other dragons. Hmm. Would it be willing to come out where I can see it? Probably not. Fair. I will leave you then to speak for it on its behalf, unless you propose some other solution. Um, I will reach out to him again and ask him if there's anything that he wants for the tree, because we're going to try to do this, if there's anything specific that he would like me to say on his behalf. He says he wants them to go away. Okay. I will tell them. And I think that you should stay hidden. Because I think that they would try to hurt you if they could see you. You're gonna tell them not to, though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, uh, this little path is kind of continuing along. It's moving pretty fast, but it's, you know, it doesn't take much to be able to follow it. Um, I'm just envisioning it a very tiny version of, you know, uh, the like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons where he's leaving a little underground trail, right? <laughs> You're seeing that, basically. And it leads you, basically, towards the edge of the city and to where this the sheer wall of amber, uh, you know, soars and slopes over your heads. And eventually... Should we, um, should we send a message off to Amethyst? Do you think she, she already knows? I think she has a sense of what's happening. And Arius can yeah. talk to her as well. Yeah. All right. I, I just She'll don't want to right. feel like we're abandoning her or anything. No, no. I think that okay. if she was faced between doing what we're doing and hanging out with the tree, she would definitely pick the tree. That's fair. I still really like the tree, which is nice. I'll tell yes. her where you're going. Thank you. You guys be careful, though, okay? You too. Stay and as, hidden. Uh, as you watch, as this little trail sort of reaches the, the side, you see starting to kind of melt away in a circular hole. You see a sort of tunnel just sort of melting out of the wall of amber. And it doesn't ever get very big. Uh, the taller of you have to actually kind of stoop a little bit. It's probably only about five feet diameter uh the uh sagor definitely has to al almost crawl uh because he's he's pretty tall uh the githyanki in general you've noticed are you know tall and lithe in their proportions but it begins to tunnel out through the side and uh it's it's a surprisingly long tunnel even well, just here on the edge with that then um I want to catch Nirkina's uh, attention. Nirkina, can I can I talk to you for a minute? Don't we have a? We're sort of in the middle. Of we'll something? keep up. Oh, oh, they'll okay. they'll wait. And I wait till they're a little bit further away. Mm -hmm. Lower my voice a little bit. <clears throat> Nirkina. Um, I'm a bit concerned about you. About me? I'm, I'm fine. No. You're not even here. You're somewhere else. And I'm... I'm worried that you're... vulnerable. Well, that's not untrue. But... we have to make do with the situation. Still... It would be better if we could figure out a way that we can uh, make sure that you're with us fully. I don't even know what this is. I mean, you look like you're flesh and blood, but that can't be. 
And I kind of just poke her on the arm, and it clearly is solid, but... Yeah, but, uh, yeah, the other than just a slight sort of spectral glow, there's the only sign of this astral form is the silvery tether extending out from her back and then fading into nothing after a foot or two. I mean, your choice of fashion accessory is fine, but... <laughs> it's not something we really have a choice right now, and, and I can't... I don't, I don't think there's anything we can do about it at the moment. I don't know but if I, I can accept that. I appreciate your concern. I don't know if I can accept that. If something happens to you there, I don't even know where there is. I know something about the mountain, but if something were to take you away now, it would be a problem for us. We would all have a problem. It would be a group problem for you not to be here. Um, I agree. That's not ideal, but... It's not that it's not ideal. It's 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 terrible. I mean, just imagine what would happen if you suddenly just vanished. We'd all probably die or something. Oh, I think that's a, that's a bit dramatic. <laughs> Have you seen what we're doing? Have you... I mean, do you... How could you not say dramatic things right now. Well, you kind of get numb to dramatic after a while, I think. But uh, th there's nothing that we can do about it right now, Alaric. I hate that feeling. That I... That you might vanish. I'm not gonna vanish, Alaric. Come on, let's go. We have to get... You already did others. once. You were just snuffed out. How do I know that's not going to happen again? S snuffed out well. By that bastard and his spells. He's not a concern at the moment. You know that. I told you that. He's always a concern while he exists. He was dead once. That didn't take. Hell, he's been dead more times than once, probably. How do I know he's not already crawling out of that hole and menacing towards you where the hell you are and standing over you right now? Can you tell? Can you see where you are? I can't. I'm here. Yeah. Well, just don't go anywhere, all right? I, uh, It caused a problem for everybody. And just march on. She's just kind of standing there going, What the heck? <laughs> Shake it off and keep on going. Baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you make your way very slowly through this, this narrow tunnel, and it extends for a good, you know, like 60, 70 feet through this, you know, the, this wall of amber, and uh, it's relatively straight. It's not, you know, perfectly straight like an arrow, but it's not overly convoluted. But eventually, you see a light of sorts at the end of this tunnel, but realizing that uh, its brightness is only relative to the darkness inside this tunnel because it is simply the formless gray mist of the astral sea outside. And so are you, what is the marching order? Because this is definitely single file through this tunnel here. Well, apparently I'm last, so. <laughs> I was probably going first because I was following <laughs> the trail. Seems fair. I think uh, sure. Sagor would certainly be his inclination would be towards to be towards the front unless you guys would press yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would want to stay right behind him. Yeah. Yeah, I was probably behind Archie then. Uh, so he, you're all following out there, and so as you approach uh, the end of this tunnel, you realize that of course there's no. There's no gravity, right? So there's no risk of falling outside, even though there's not really anywhere to stand, per se. 
but you can all easily just sort of float out the exterior of this uh, tunnel where once again you have the sense of being on an enormous amber plane and up and down gets a little funny because it resembles most like being on the ground this side of the tunnel that you've just exited with the misty overcast sky above but surrounding you not close but you know visibly present dominating the sky in variety of places is the armada uh, with dozens of ships visible from this standpoint at various distances but perhaps more alarming is uh, you get a closer look at one of those enormous creatures. It's still a good 500 feet off, but it is enormous. It's, if it were to be here with you on this plane, it would tower over you easily, uh, like 40 feet tall and long like a slug with two big pincered arms like like a claw, like a crab claw, and one big eye above a toothy filled mouth, and it just hangs there in space, staring at nothing in particular, um, with a, another small ship kind of floating just above and below it. And uh, Sagor looks over to that and just says, The weapons I spoke of. Wow. What are they? Astral dreadnoughts. Predators native to this plane. They are powerful creatures. And in fact, they are the central key to the test of worthiness that earns one a sword like this one. Mm. Wow. But now, they have been harnessed to a different end, thanks to our ally. Yeah, you've been kind of cagey about this ally. Only because I'm not... I believe that I can speak for the Githyanki. But the relationship with this ally is tenuous. Well, I understand that part. And Alaric looks nervous. It's... Too much open space. I'm starting to regret coming out of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. hmm. We could float to the ship, but I will send a signal first so that we do not appear as invaders. Or yeah, make, raiders. Make, make sure they're well warned off. We wouldn't want to hurt anybody. Not at this stage, anyway. We got better, bigger enemies to fight. You have no additional need to prove yourself to me, Alaric. But do take note of the number of ships here, and I assure you this density is present all around this enormous space. As powerful as you are, there are more of us. I hope so. We're going to need them all. <laughs> and so he pulls out from a little sort of uh, pouch at his belt uh, something that just looks it's, it's just like a strange stick but he just points it like a wand and uh, presses something on it and a burst of light shoots out from it and sort of and uh, as it does one of the ships nearby a couple of ships start in this direction but uh, one of them clearly sort of takes the lead it's the quickest to respond and it begins moving in all of your direction everybody put on your smiley faces i'm just going to hit alaric with tongues just because he's been doing so well <laughs> I don't understand what's happening in my tongue. It feels kind of funny. <laughs> uh, so, uh, he, uh, Sagor looks to the rest of you and says, It 
would be best if you allow me to speak at first. Naturally. Alaric, just keep an ear out. Um, sure. So, as uh, he kind of guides you all to sort of start floating up to sort of meet the ship, right? Because there's no real need for you to wait all the way there close to the wall, and moving out makes it so that the ship doesn't have to risk coming too close. So, you move up to kind of intercept the ship, and you see that it is a ship not too dissimilar from the one that you had taken yourself. It's not a large ship, but there are uh, several Gith on board, including one that uh, has uh, has the same armor and a similar sword as the one that you fought and took your sword from, uh, Otterki, and uh, uh, he kind of steps forward but isn't the one that kind of takes the lead to talk. Instead, you see uh, another in fancy uh, officer's armor coming out from the cabin who floats up and addresses uh, Sagor in Gith, and so Alaric would understand, but they are speaking in Gith, so what it uh, says is uh, Kithrak, how come by you these strange companions? And with a sort of degree of like sarcasm here uh, you get the sense that there's a little bit of a amusement uh, but he says these with me must speak with the supreme commander and once they have the queen they carry information that is critical to our mission, and they have proven themselves to me in more ways than one. And at this, the other officer is a little bit like, like that's not what they expected to hear, but it just says, to the flagship then? Yes. He then turns to the rest of you and says, board the ship. We will be taken to the flagship, and says that in common. Thank you. Of course. Let's go. So, you all, uh, all right. land yourselves on the ship, sort of orient yourselves to it. You're yep. getting a lot of strange looks from the other uh, uh, Gith Yankee, and I think that amongst the various looks, you see kind of a whole spectrum uh, you know, all the way from, uh, boy, if they impressed a Kithrak, they must be really hot stuff. That's, you know, we're going to the flagship. That's wow. That seems really important. All the, and that's like from one end of the spectrum and all the way down to, they don't look so tough. I, I can probably take them. That sort of look, you're getting all these different crew are certainly not acting aggressive, but giving you the impression of like, you know, we're watching you guys. Don't try anything funny. But as the ship begins to move, at, you know, sailing past, going above and past this other, uh, you know, this, this astral dreadnought, uh, those of you who, uh, let's see, um, make a perception check as you guys pass it. Seventeen. Yeah, rolled bad. Nineteen. Twenty-seven. Thirty. <laughs> okay. Seven. Yeah. So both Nira and Cadence definitely noticed that you had initially thought that the dreadnought seems to be just kind of staring at nothing in particular, um, and occasionally sort of just having its gaze like drift a little bit, like like it's just staring into space for no reason. But what you realize as you're a little closer is that it is actually looking very intently at something very small that's moving around in front of it. And you're too far away to really get a sense of what that is, but it's just it's something very small, um, like the size of your fist, but glowing just a little bit. And you can realize that it's hovering around in front of the, the thing and so its gaze is basically just tracking it, like, perfectly. So, 
That's what you notice as you're passing by. Probably not the opportune time to share that with those who didn't see it, so... <laughs> Keep that so, one. <laughs> as you are making uh, your journey around, you are... Uh, you, you find yourself, now that you've got a little bit of distance, you certainly are once again getting the sense of scale of the enormity of this tree along with the the shell of amber up above it and the thickness of it and of course the, the soil and root structure below and you're moving away and once again just sort of the scale of everything is intimidating especially compared to all of these ships that as big as they are when you're standing on them seem like toys next to the enormity of this structure but as you come around to the far side you definitely see an area where there is a greater density of larger ships, including one that is easily five times the size of the one you're on, and very ornately, uh, you know, decorated and uh, all sorts of fancy ornamentation alongside uh, along its hull, and uh, you find yourself moving in that direction. Sagor just sort of nods to it and says, The Supreme Commander can be found aboard that ship. If it is deemed an acceptable request, and I believe it will be, we can then be put in communication with the Queen. Will you, um, speak alongside us? We're strangers here, and I'd hate to, um, you know, offend anybody any further. It will be expected that I explain the situation to begin with, but it will be the Supreme Commander's decision whether I remain or not. Of course. Any, um, any tips? I mean, do we address them as their supremeness or, um, commander? Or Supreme Commander. Commander Supremo. I'll do to Reno if they're not in a brief <laughs> Supreme Commander. Alright. The Keep Queen is not here physically, but she has her ways. Sort of glance over near Keenan. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that. And uh, he, by the way, like he, he doesn't bat an eye at all at the, the fact that you're in the astral projection form. It seems he acts like, sure, yeah, why not? That's all, you know, very common. So uh, you're all sailing up. And certainly as you approach, you realize that you are definitely being flanked by, you know, other ships. You're, you're getting an escort in. Uh, for all of the reasons that that might happen. Uh, and you're certainly surrounded, and uh, I, I hope that I am adequately conveying that there are hundreds of ships the size of the one that you're on, and easily thousands of Githyanki warriors here. And not to mention... The aforementioned Astral Dreadnought is only one of dozens that have been spaced out, uh, you know, relatively equidistant, kept keeping their distance from one another around this structure, and they all seem to, at least for the moment, be just waiting. And as you come up alongside the, the flagship, there is a, a, a signal, like there's this a little port that opens up in the side that flashes with some kind of light and your ship comes to a stop. And you hear all of you in your heads, uh, a voice say, wait to be processed. Sagor, what's that mean? Processed. Process. He, he just says it is a security measure. It is expected. 
just be patient. All is as I promised. I uh, hope so. So are you all just just waiting? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Do we get the sense this is going to take a while? Like, okay. is it, are we in a waiting room kind of thing? Well, right now you're still on the deck of the ship that has brought you up here, but certainly you've been asked to stop short of the actual flagship and um Sagor if, if we could talk for a minute amongst ourselves this is a good opportunity but it's a big one we have to make sure we understand what we're trying to do here Certainly. especially kind of gather people off to the side holy crap that's a lot of shit. just want to clarify I I at first thought that you were meaning want to talk with Sigor. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. I, I, that, that's why I, I wanted to just be, be make sure I understood. I yeah, followed because yeah, yeah. I I didn't think you were going to say that to Sigor. So I was like, oh wait a minute. No. <laughs> okay. No, so it's more of I, I want to have the confab with our group because um, before I, he actually says that, group. and then he turns and sees that it's him. And well, then right. Yeah. So like back. you you kind of get into a huddle, and he's like, so what are we talking about? Uh, no, <laughs> no um, I want you to stay outside the room while we go inside and watch the so, curtains. So uh, he, he he says, "Be my guest, but I think you know not to make sudden moves, and I would urge you to assume that you are heard." Of course. But he he does step back. Holy crap. Just take deep breaths. It'll be fine. It's well, easy for you to say I, you're not even here. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I'm going to explain this again. <sighs> Just relax. We're not here to fight. So there's nothing to be nervous about, right? I, um, I, wanted, I want this to go right. Oh, I think we all want the same thing. But I... Yeah. I used to know a little bit easier who I was fighting. They had a face, they had a name. I had a reason. A lot of those names and faces are fading away. I know that we want to fix things. That's, that's what you were all called to do. And I know there's plans underway for that. But who are they being sent against? These Githyanki, if we can convince them, if we can somehow convince them. Well, I think if they want to continue existing, I think they'll listen. They need a fight. They need someone to fight. Or something. Yeah. So what about your father, Moderki? That's what this is all about, isn't it? Well, it's possible. I mean, that, that confrontation was the whole reason that the moment was ripped out of everything anyway, right? And that led to all of this crap happening. True. But I think inviting them to that fight would be like... Um, exchanging one bad for another bad, maybe? Uh, not not to say that we're going to be able to keep them out of, I mean, we can't keep them out of everywhere. It's, and that's not what we're trying to accomplish. But I also think it would be unwise to um, open the door to a whole armada of Gith Yankee. Eh, just saying. They're already here. The doors are already open. So, Nira, make a history check. Uh, 19. So, you recall from your legend lore spell that the history of the Githyanki for thousands and thousands and thousands of years has been entirely of raiding and pillaging and taking whatever they can find and leaving 
basically. Leaving behind only what they had no use for. That includes people. But, you do also know that their history further back included the time when they themselves were enslaved by the Illithid. And so, the only thing that has ever really dissuaded them from their raiding lifestyle was following up on any possibility of Illithid to hunt. That has been in the back of my mind, but um, I wasn't sure. I, right. I couldn't remember specifically what name you used for them. Yeah. Um, but that, that's how it works. So I think that, uh, yeah, you did, as part of your vision, certainly cross the connect those dots, the, the, the mind flayers that you fought. Um, mm -hmm. that, that is what their, their ancient foe was. But yeah, so I, uh, your, your history check is giving you both of those pieces of information. One is that their behavior has been pretty consistent over a long period of time, but they also have an ancient hated enemy that they are very <laughs> still, very much still uh, up, uptight about. So I think a better carrot to dangle in front of them would be the presence of the Illithid in the plane of water. As we know, our Kotoan friends are very keen to oust them from there, and the Githyanki might be interested in that. Why them? Mm -hmm. They are very ancient enemies. At one point, the Githyanki had been enslaved by the Illithid and had sworn since that time to follow them anywhere and everywhere to defeat them. Like that, that goes even further back than this going where they want and taking what they want. All right, but how, I mean, the, the squid heads, they, they weren't, they were taking advantage of the holes, but they weren't creating them, I don't think. Uh, yeah, no. it didn't seem so. No, they, they weren't creating them. But the Githyanki might see some benefit to traveling there. Maybe, say, give up on this tree for just a little bit, go pursue this other thing. And let's see if we can fix it and make the path easier for you. So we can we can offer them a pathway to the Illithid. That's that's what you're saying. In yes. exchange for something. In exchange for them holding doing off something. on this attack. We have a chance to have an army help us in what's going on. The names that I knew are gone, but there were more fights going on. Right, but they don't have any they don't have any ties to that. They don't care. And they won't care. They're not liberators in a general sense. They have a very specific enemy. But they can't find them. We can. Right. But we can okay. offer that as the carrot in exchange for them doing what we need them to do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Which is to leave the tree alone. I I feel like I feel like you're trying to put a hammer on a shelf rather than hitting a rock with it. Do Do you see all of this? I do, and it's well, powerful. Well, if they assist That's us... That's the best possible outcome here. No. If they assist us, then we can help them find the Illithid. If they can take... If this army can be turned to the things we need, then we can... We'll have an army to fight with, not just us. You're, you're not getting. We're, we're not, not going to. Yeah, they, they won't do it, for starters. They don't care. They don't care about the material plane. They care about this one. They care about themselves. Well, exactly, and that's not where the moment was stolen from. If we put back the moment, Archie's father comes and wreaks havoc on the material plane, not here, and everything goes back to normal, well, and, and as much as it can. But the, the universe has fallen apart. Well, that's what I'm saying. We are going to be traveling back in time 
we can't take an armada with us anyway. We can't. We can't. <laughs> I, sure I about that? The the amount of magic that would take, I can't, I can't even fathom it. And I I don't think we can count on that because they won't. Okay. <laughs> The point that you're missing right now is that what we need is for them not to attack the tree. We need to get them away from where they are right now. And we need to provide them with a good enough reason to do that. They want to use the tree. That is why they're trying to break the amber. I know, so they I know. they can travel through the tree. But if we have an opportunity to turn them to something that we need more than just them not doing anything, this this army could smash through any enemy we face so far. Why there would is we not nothing turn it to that, that we can give them that would no. sway them to that cause. That's not who they are. An opening to where the 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 squid illa things are. We know where it is, or if we can we find one. Where it is, then that's all they need. They don't need our help yeah. getting there. We couldn't get them there anyway. So we don't tell them where it is. They're not going to do it for a. Maybe we'll show you how to get there later. That I mean, that. I understand what you want and what you're saying, but that is not going to happen. We have to be a little more realistic and pragmatic in what we can it's, do. It's an army out there. If we don't put that army to work, they aren't just going to sit around. We have to give them something to do. And not just will. something we need done, not something they only need done. The thing that we need them to do is not attack the tree. That is what we need them. That the is thing, what we need to do. The thing we need them to do is fight the Fey. They're the ones that are the worst enemies of us right now. And if we could turn this army against that army, then maybe we'd have them at a standstill and we can get the rest of what we need done without being hunted, without being chased, without being manipulated and torn apart. And that's what you're going to convince the Queen of, because. That's why we're going to talk to her, and they may not even know that the, everything's going to end. So, at, at this point, um, Sagor uh, approaches and, and just says, I don't mean to interrupt, but I've been called ahead. I hope that I have given you adequate assurance that my story that I share with the Supreme Commander will be what we have discussed. I consider your mission, your position, important enough to be transmitted without adulteration. Can I make I, an insight check? Yeah. I like this guy. Um, 27. What he he is sincere. Okay. He is absolutely going to do what he says he's going to do. But as he was about to continue on, I cannot promise you what the supreme commander's reaction will be. Your words have persuaded me. I cannot promise that they will persuade you. We could not ask more of that. Kithrak, Sagor, despite the um, unfortunate way that we met, I hope to meet you again in calmer worlds and better times. Calmer worlds do not sound like better times to me. <clears throat> but otherwise, I respect you all as well. And uh, he with that, uh, he, with a couple of uh, knights, uh, is, kind of floats up to the flagship. Oh, boy. Just let me know what to swing at. I'll do nothing. That's what I want them to swing at. <laughs> oh, Alaric. I was making my head hurt. You have to admire his optimism, though. I, I yeah. understand the reasoning. Mm hmm. Yeah. Call it optimism, I call it desperation. Mm. I don't oh. 
don't think we're quite there yet. Not They're pretty either. hobgoblin-y. Yeah. The Fae can mess everything up. They're not dealt with. And as powerful as some of us have become, looking again at Nirakina, I still don't think they were quite there to face off against them. But this uh, army... Seems, seems what they're best at. Meddling, disrupting. So, after another maybe 10, 15 minutes goes by, you once again hear the message in your head that says, Soldier escorts are being sent. Do not be alarmed. As warriors, we understand that you would not want to surrender your weapons. So instead, you will be escorted by soldiers sufficient to provide us with security. I am sure you understand. That's fair! I don't think you have to yell. <laughs> so, and then sure enough, uh, you are basically, uh, you, you see that a sort of uh, an opening in where like the, the, the main deck of the ship had sort of been seen soldiers standing at attention. They've made sort of an opening there and then like rising up off the deck around it, you see like a good 25 like warriors just sort of fanning out but with a clear like path in the middle that you're you can intuit that uh, that's where you're supposed to go it, it, it is following up us. where Sigor went hey at least they think that's adequate <laughs> Shh. stop laughing you're going to embarrass them <clears throat> all right so, you, you, you float up that way, I assume? Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, Trying not to laugh. Diplomatically as possible. I missed you, Chooch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as you all are uh, make your way to the deck of the ship, in a very sort of uh, regimented, practiced way, like they, they, they have this down to a science. You know, they, they line in where there's a relatively, you know, relatively narrow passageway uh, leading down into the ship, but you are basically flanked on, on all sides by, uh, you know, the, the regiments of these warriors. And uh, here and there, uh, other soldiers in, you know, the, the fancier uh, armor, and you are led into... Uh, on a, what on a smaller ship might be where you would expect to find the captain's quarters, but on the, a ship this size is more like an uh, elaborate war room type of uh, space. And uh, as you uh, are brought in there, you see that there are a number of other warriors in there. They are clearly taking you guys very seriously. But you see, uh, you know, you see an older looking Yankee in what is obviously like the fanciest plate armor of them all like it's clearly like real armor it is not ornamental but it is elaborate and he is uh, standing aside um, you know it's it's like one of those war room map tables except that it's three-dimensional it is a carved piece of stone in the shape of the tree with little floating model ships all around it. And uh, he is standing next to it. You see that Sigor is standing next to him. Um, and uh, he, once he makes eye contact, he waves you over. I try to adjust my robes and realize I can't because they're not real. <laughs> Kind of poke Alaric and make him go for it. Look surprised. Looks over everybody else. <laughs> uh, you see that Sigor no longer has that the uh, the silver great sword that you surrendered. He's not holding it anymore. All right, let's let's get this over with. 
I start walking forward. <laughs> so you make your way over there, uh, and uh, as as you're approaching, uh, you 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 get to a point where there is just a very subtle change in body language from the other soldiers. It is not hostile or aggressive, but very clearly communicates. That's far enough. <laughs> you know, just a little bit of like, you're good right there. All right. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, and you and you're close too. You're this is this is not some like imperious person up on a throne looking down at you like a power no. move. This is an important person taking dangerous people very seriously. So, he is looking to you and uh, speaks in common. Kithrak Sagor has spoken highly of your battle prowess and your honor, if not your existing knowledge of our ways. He also tells me that you have knowledge of great interest to our current mission and to our queen. I am Supreme, Supreme Commander Grankar. And it is me that you must persuade if you wish to change the current course of events. But before we begin, our ally, Queen Solomonia of the Dawn Court, and the entire room just lights up with just what appears to be bright sunlight as a figure just wreathed in like, like when you're trying to look into, look at someone just, it, but they're silhouetted by the bright sun, that's what it's like to look at this person. And she just, and you hear a voice once again in your head saying, I've been waiting a long time to meet you. God damn it, Butters. And you that's did where it. we're going to finish for tonight. <laughs> 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 well, it was great. I hate I being it. right. I couldn't believe it when uh, you started saying it's the Fae. They're the ones that are real problems. Yeah. And I was like, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that guy saw the script. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll see how that goes next time. But before we sign off for this time, uh, we are going to make ourselves available. If any of you live in the chat have questions that you would like to ask our characters, we can have them answer in character, uh, and also while we're maybe waiting for a couple of those to come in. A reminder, Extra Life is a great charity to benefit children's hospitals. You can check out the link up there on the little thing. Uh, and if you're not watching the video, that is uh, www.extra-life.org slash participant slash Christiana slash uh, hyphen Ellis. Uh, I'm going to be putting that link everywhere. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> we decided with a random roll that we were going to be playing the Acquisitions Incorporated Adventure, Orrery of the Wanderer, uh, which is a great adventure that's got lots of cool stuff in it and lots of fan service if you're a fan of the Acquisitions Incorporated show, but it's plenty accessible even if you're not. Uh, you just get to be a person who, in world, doesn't know very much about Acquisitions Incorporated, and that's <laughs> fine. I so, just want to see what happens after 24 hours of you having to say the word orrery <laughs> over and over and over. It's going to be like, We have a question for Alaric. Right. No, we don't. No, no there's no question. <laughs> there we do. No, right. there, no problem. How there. close did you get to confessing? Mm. Uh, probably as close as he's ever come. <laughs> That's for certain. Um... Yeah, uh, probably that's the, the best answer can, in a way. Uh, I mean, she was away for a long time, too. And then we thought she was back. And then she was away for an even longer time. And I thought she confronted me. Not really sure where he stands right now. 
sorry, not sorry. And then, uh, <laughs> guys, we have Mira. Do you have a clue? <laughs> Mira is completely. Mm -mm. She seems Mira like has no up idea that there's something weird. Yeah, a, a lot like... has been acting so strange since I've been back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, <sighs> I mean, he's he's been through a lot, so. <laughs> He's just under stress. He's yeah, been yeah. through a lot. <laughs> pat, pat, pat. You've been through a lot. Well, you should probably take a lie down. It's entirely reasonable that many people in the party could have some trust issues and some uh, difficulty with mm. making yourself vulnerable <laughs> with other people. Yeah. Mm. And Nira has, uh, uh, Nira's focus is elsewhere. Mm. Yeah, so is her body. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, if uh, just if you're gonna check out our our extra life campaign, you can follow that. Uh, make some pledges. I'm going to be putting up some themed donor rewards now that we've decided what the adventure is going to be. And uh, honestly, uh, the acquisitions incorporated kind of lines up with that that whole money grubbing thing, you know. So maybe like we could have some of the donor rewards be money going to the uh the pledge donation equals money in the party's pocket could be we'll i see. would also note that last year a donation from there uh resulted in the whole god in the bottle thing that's true, true. That's true. Oh, yeah. so the iron yeah. flask as a magic item for the heroes of legend was a donor reward from one of our uh, our donors so oh we, we have a question for, for we have a question yeah. for cadence before we go <laughs> Cadence, yeah, from Sparta <laughs> Master. Cadence, how much do you want to scream about it? About Nira and <laughs> Alaric. Yeah. Um, you know, like I've known like way longer than Nira. <laughs> like, I've, I've had my suspicions for quite a while that Alaric had feelings for her um but the fact that she didn't seem to reciprocate them and she was very preoccupied with um zora made me kind of keep it to myself because it was none of my business so i mean i don't really know what's going on right now but alaric has been super super grouchy so I kind of want to scream about that because <laughs> I have no idea why he's so grouchy. And I'm just like, what is going on? Why is everybody being so mean right now? <laughs> so no one told you life was going to be this way. <laughs> <laughs> that was remarkably in sync for an online episode. I think going to go ahead and call it there but thank you everyone for listening and or watching we hope you'll uh we'll be back next week for more adventure on so many levels but also please do check out this uh this charity page it is a great cause we've been doing it uh to, you know the last two years it's a lot of fun and uh we hope you'll check it out and so in the meantime we'll be back next week for more adventure on so many, so many levels. levels.